My name is Rachel, and I'm a 33-year-old homemaker. My husband, Adam, and I have been married for four years, but we haven't been able to have a child yet. We're undergoing fertility treatments, but conceiving has proven difficult. One day, as I was returning from the grocery store, I noticed a little girl, a complete stranger, squatting in front of my house. I wondered why she was outside in the cold, winter weather without a coat, so I approached her and asked, Are you waiting for someone? Can you tell me your name? Selena. Selena. Okay. Where's your mother? Mommy went somewhere, she replied. Are you lost? What's your mother's name? Mary. Mary? My heart sank. Mary, the sender of the letter, was my older sister. She had left home at twenty and never returned. It's been nearly seventeen years since we last saw her. As a teenager, she often ran away, got into trouble with men, and caused financial and emotional strain. Now to find out she had a child. Selena handed me a piece of paper. My hands shook as I opened it. Inside were the words, Take care of this child for a while. No way, I whispered. Are you Mary's daughter? Mommy said to stay here because you're her sister, Selena explained. I took her hand and led her inside. She was freezing and trembling. I wondered how long she'd been outside. Mary had always been an irresponsible sister, but leaving her child like this was shocking. I'd always wanted a child, but couldn't have one. Pushing aside my feelings, I turned on the stove and wrapped Selena in a warm blanket. Selena, are you hungry? Yes, I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. You haven't eaten. My concern deepened. I'll get you some food right away. I heated up some pumpkin soup for her. Yesterday, I made some pumpkin soup and gave it to Selena right away. It was her first time trying it, and she eagerly drank a lot, clearly enjoying the taste. This is delicious, it's really good. She exclaimed with a big smile. I was delighted to see her enjoy the soup so much, but it also saddened me, as I wondered what kind of meals she was used to. Instead of questioning her about her usual diet, I focused on cooking more food for her to enjoy. I made fried chicken, an omelet and rice, and she devoured everything, praising each dish as delicious and tasty. Once she seemed completely satisfied, I suggested we take a bath. It seemed she hadn't bathed in a few days and her hair was greasy. Selena, how about a bath? I asked. Her expression tense for a moment, and I could tell she wasn't entirely comfortable with the idea. You don't like baths? I asked. No, it's fine, she replied hesitantly. I hurried to the bedroom to find some smaller clothes for her to wear as pajamas. When I returned to the living room, Selena was gone. Hearing water running in the kitchen, I peeked in and found her trying to wash her hair in the kitchen sink. What are you doing? The water is so cold. I exclaimed. You'll catch a cold. Selena apologized, but I assured her she didn't need to. I wrapped her in a blanket and took her to the bathroom. She seemed amazed as I led her inside. This is just like the house I saw on TV, she exclaimed. From her reaction, it seemed the house where Selena lived did not have a proper bathroom. It broke my heart to think that Mary made her wash in cold tap water from the kitchen to save on gas money. Holding back tears, I undressed Selena and gently placed her in the warm bathtub. It's so warm. Are baths always this warm? She asked, eyes wide with wonder. Yes, they are. From now on, you can take a warm bath every day, I said. Really? I'm so happy, she replied with a big smile. I helped Selena warm up and get clean in the bath. Her hair was slightly tangled, but I treated it to make it more manageable, and she soon looked like herself again. After dressing her in my loungewear, we relaxed on the couch in the living room as we waited for Adam to come home. When Adam walked in, Selena seemed startled and drew back in fear. I'm home, he called out. Welcome back, I replied. This is the girl I told you about. Hello, Adam greeted, but Selena continued to shy away. It's okay, I reassured her. This is my husband, Adam. He's very kind, so you don't need to be afraid of him. I explained the situation to Adam and he was visibly upset. What? That's unforgivable. We'll keep her here for a while. Of course, I agreed. How could she abandon her own child? Once Adam and I had discussed the situation, we went back to Selena, who was curled up in the living room. I spoke gently to her. Selena, as I mentioned, this is my husband, Adam. Hi, Selena. Please call me Uncle Adam, he added. Selena nodded timidly, and I went on to explain. The three of us will be living together here for a while. Is that okay with you? Is it really okay for me to stay here? Selena asked hesitantly. 
Of course, I said with a reassuring smile. And once we get settled, you'll be able to go to elementary school. I've never been to school, Selena said quietly. You've never been to school? What about kindergarten? I haven't gone to kindergarten because I'm no one, Selena mumbled. My heart ached hearing her words. She was too young to understand why she might feel this way. I decided not to press her further that day and let her rest instead. The next day, we would find a way to help her adjust to her new life. I informed my parents about Selena's situation, and they rushed over to see us. Upon meeting Selena, they introduced themselves as her grandparents, grandma and grandpa, and enveloped her in a comforting hug. Selena seemed puzzled but happy, as if she had never realized she had grandparents before. After entrusting Selena to my parents' care, I headed to City Hall to obtain Mary's family records. To my surprise, Mary was unmarried, and there was no record of any children. It appeared that Selena's birth had never been officially registered, making her essentially a non-existent child who never received any formal notices, such as enrollment for elementary school. This revelation shed light on why Selena referred to herself as no one. After consulting with various authorities, including the Child Consultation Center and the Municipal Office, we finally managed to establish Selena's family register. I happily informed her, Selena, now you can go to elementary school. I'm so happy for you. By this time, it had been over a month since Selena came to live with us, but she hadn't opened up much. She always seemed skittish, especially whenever Adam or I moved. Additionally, whenever she made a mistake, she would apologize excessively, curling up her body and covering her head. It was evident that Mary's past actions had left a lasting impact on her. Selena, you don't have to apologize so much. I reassured her. Uncle Adam and I will never get mad at you, and we will never harm you. I promise. Really? Selena asked with a glimmer of hope. Of course, I replied sincerely. I made a promise, but despite that, Selena's shyness persisted. However, as time passed, she gradually became more talkative and even began to smile more often. Then one day, Selena blurted out, I wonder when she will come for me. Those words struck a chord with me, evoking a sense of sadness. Despite Mary's mistreatment, Selena still longed for her mother. Since Selena's arrival, every day had been filled with joy for me. We had wanted children so badly and treated Selena as our own daughter. We hoped she would stay with us for a long time. The day after Selena's statement, she received an invitation to elementary school. I was relieved that she would finally experience the same school life as other children. Now that it's settled, we need to prepare for school. I said to Selena, we'll need to buy a school bag, stationery, and lots of clothes. Let's go shopping today for new clothes and stuff. I can get new clothes. I've already got some, Selena replied. It's not enough. You'll need more comfortable clothes for school, I insisted. So Selena, Adam, and I went to the shopping mall and got everything she needed for school. I was so excited about preparing for her school entrance that I ended up buying a lot of clothes and stationery. As we headed home, the three of us laughed and joked about buying too many things. However, to my surprise, I saw Mary standing in front of our house. Mom, Selena exclaimed. Mary responded coldly, it's not welcome home. What were you thinking? How dare you come here? I stepped in, trying to calm the situation. Hey, hey, calm down. Don't yell. It's not productive. First, you need to apologize to Selena. But Mary only glanced at Selena and refused to make eye contact. What are you trying to do? I asked. We can't just stand here talking. Let me in the house. I'll do it even if you don't tell me. Let's go, Selena, Mary said, ignoring my question. I decided to let Mary in and ask her what was going on. Is this your husband? She asked, pointing at Adam. He's a nice guy. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam, he replied. I don't know how to say this, given it's our first meeting, but the way you've treated your child makes you an unfit parent. Mary seemed taken aback by Adam's boldness. You're too arrogant, my brother-in-law. You can't talk to me like that. You don't know me. Maybe not, but I do know you didn't take care of her properly. How could you neglect your own child? Adam countered. Mary, clearly irritated by our accusations, seemed unable to grasp the gravity of her actions. I was perplexed by her lack of accountability. I asked Selena how she felt about seeing her mother, and it was clear she was still scared. She couldn't look Mary in the eye and recoiled in fear. 
Initially, I assumed Selena missed her mother, but now I wasn't so sure. As I was contemplating this, Mary spoke up. You two don't have kids, right? She asked. No, but so what? I responded. Well, I'm going to leave this child with you, she declared. I've raised her through the toughest stages of her life. You should be grateful to have an older kid now. Adam was incredulous. Do you even know what you're saying? You're abandoning your own child as though she's an object to be handed off. I know exactly what I'm saying, Mary shot back. I'm giving you childless people a kid to raise. You should be thankful. I shook my head in disbelief. That's outrageous. We're not giving her back to you, even if you ask. We've already made her a family register, and she's going to start elementary school next month. We'll make sure she's happier than she was with you. Oh, so you've made a family register for her, Mary retorted, seemingly indifferent. I did, I responded. Why didn't you file a birth certificate? Because if I had, they would know I have a child. I didn't want to disrupt my life for such a selfish reason. Mary's admission explained why Selena had been unable to attend kindergarten or elementary school. Her callous attitude continued to baffle me. That's not right. Selena deserves an education. What you've done is neglect, not just active truancy. I told her, knowing that reasoning with Mary was pointless. Mary had apparently broken up with Selena's father before Selena was born and had never registered the birth. To date other men, she often left Selena alone, pretending to be unmarried and childless. Her goal was to find a new partner and raise her child. We'll take care of Selena, I said firm in my decision, but please don't come back to see us again. Then give me 10 million yen. I'm giving you a person, so 10 million is a small price to pay, right? Mary demanded. What are you talking about? You're trying to sell your daughter? I was horrified. Of course, I'm not going to pay you though. Selena is a human being, I said firmly. When I refused to pay, Mary threatened to take Selena back and confine her at home, forcing her to wash with cold tap water again. I won't let you do that, I said. Fine, 10 million then, she retorted. Well, I can't get it for you today. You'll have to come back later to pick it up. I'll keep Selena here until then. I said, pretending to agree to her demands to keep Selena safe. Whatever. I don't want to be bothered with her anyway, Mary replied dismissively. Though I had no intention of paying Mary, I lied quickly to prevent her from taking Selena away. Knowing Mary might return to reclaim her, Adam and I considered what steps we could take next. But before acting, we wanted to understand how Selena felt. Selena, do you want to go back to your mommy? I asked her gently. I don't want to go back. Mom scares me. She always bumps into me and says mean things. I don't want to go back, Selena confessed. I see, I said gently. The other day, you mentioned wondering when your mother would come for you. Was that because you were afraid she'd make you leave us? Yes, Selena replied, her eyes downcast. I was worried that if mommy came, I have to go back to that house. But I want to stay here forever. I understand, I reassured her. We'll do everything we can to make sure you can stay with us from now on. With Selena's feelings clear, Adam and I decided to investigate Mary's background further. We contacted an investigative firm known to Adam and discovered Mary was now engaged to a successful lawyer. We formulated a plan to keep Mary from taking Selena away and worked discreetly to prepare everything. A week later, when everything was set, we informed Mary that we had the money and invited her to our home for the exchange. During the meeting, I had my parents care for Selena. When Mary arrived, she immediately asked if I had the money. I won't give you the money, and I won't give you Selena either, I declared firmly. Mary's expression turned sour. I came all the way here because you said you had the money ready. Now give it to me. Do you realize how heartbroken Selena is? I challenged her. You're trying to sell your own child for money. Unbelievable. How I raise my child is none of your business, Mary shot back. Children grow up just fine on their own. You don't understand because you don't have kids. Did you even tell your boyfriend about having a child? I asked pointedly. Of course not. He's a successful lawyer and we're getting married next year. We plan to live happily ever after. Don't bother us, Mary said dismissively. Just then, the door opened and Mary's fiancé, the elite lawyer, walked in. He had heard our conversation. Don't tell me what you just said is true, he said, shocked. Did you lie to me? What's going on? Why are you here? You told me you were unmarried and childless. 
I've never been married, Mary said. I just happened to have a child by mistake. By mistake? That's a terrible thing to say. Adam exclaimed, disgusted. The lawyer confronted Mary. I was about to marry you without knowing you cheated on me. Of course, I'm breaking off the engagement. You lied to me, so you'll need to pay me alimony. Wait, broken engagement alimony? Please don't leave me, Mary pleaded. Shut up. I can't marry a woman who treats her child like that. I don't even want to see your face, the lawyer replied, turning his back on her. Mary turned to me, her eyes filled with anger. Rachel, you brought him here. Why did you do this to me? Because I knew I couldn't handle it the usual way. I'm going to discuss Selena's case with this lawyer, I explained. I was suspicious, but after hearing your words today, I realized the truth. From now on, this lawyer will represent me and my family. You'll regret making an enemy of a lawyer, Mary threatened. Soon after, a police officer arrived at our house. I had previously reported Mary for child abandonment and authorities had secretly recorded our previous conversation. I also informed them of her visit that day. Mary was taken into custody for child neglect and abandonment, facing a stint behind bars. Although it was a lengthy and complex process, Selena was eventually allowed to stay with us permanently. The lawyer demanded compensation from Mary for breaking the engagement, and she faced legal consequences. After her release from prison, Mary lost both her fiancé and Selena. Additionally, she had to work hard to pay the alimony and child support, which took a toll on her appearance and ability to attract men. Recently, she stormed into our house, crying and demanding Selena back. She's my baby. Give her back. What are you talking about? Selena is ours now. I won't let you take her back, I told Mary firmly. Nope, not mommy. Uncle and auntie are mommy and daddy, Selena chimed in. Mary, rejected by her own daughter, walked away in despair. I vowed never to let her regain custody of Selena. Mary would have to reflect on her actions alone. Meanwhile, Adam and I have stopped our painful infertility treatments. The three of us now live our days filled with laughter and joy. I'm grateful for the happiness Selena has brought into our lives, and I hope to spend the rest of my life giving her all the love I can.